Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age is the best RPG I have come across since the original Final Fantasy VII game on the PlayStation 1. I have so much I want to say about this game. I was intimidated to make this video. I was worried I would not do it justice to how much of a must have game this is to any old school RPG fans who miss traditional turn based combat. Now just because this game supports turn based combat do not assume that any designs here are outdated. There are modern improvements thrown into the mix as well, like having the ability to see your enemies out in the wild instead of random encounters like in the past. Lastly, before we jump into this, a friendly reminder that if you appreciate a YouTuber who believes video games are about escapism and not activism, Please show your support by subscribing today and hit the bell notification to not miss out on future content. The first thing Dragon Quest XI does is asks you if you would like to play this entire game in 2D or 3D mode. Previously many of the Dragon Quest games were with pixel graphics. The first entry way back in 1986 on the first Nintendo Entertainment System. So let's get to it and welcome to the smexy world of Dragon Quest XI. What you see now is the PC version, but it's also available on the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and there is even a 3DS version. This Unreal Engine 4 game, I'm sure looks amazing everywhere and greeted us back in 2017. Chances are you were too busy playing Zelda Breath of the Wild when this came out like I was, but it is not too late to start today. Dragon Quest XI has so many strong points and the strongest agreed flex is easily the combat system itself. From your first fight and to your very last, everything is turn based, like a card game or Pokemon if that helps. During your turn, there is no timer or anything to rush you. Many times, I left my game running and walked away in the middle of battle because there was no need to pause the game. Everyone will be waiting and it's a relaxing thought. When the game starts, you only have one basic attack. Select your attack and choose which enemy you wish to attack, as it is not too rare to fight at least two enemies at a time and sometimes as high as six. How much damage you do appears on the screen as well. It's not too long until some very basic math will give you a sense of control. Your sword does 5 damage and the enemy has 10 health. Easy! They will be downed in 2 shots and you can comfortably take the damage the enemy will do to you on their turn. As you win battles, your player will level up and so will their stats. Thankfully, you don't need to worry or feel intimidated by any of this. Just know each time you level up, you will by default be a little bit stronger in every way. A bit more damage, health, speed and so forth. So that same sword that was helping you do 5 damage a moment ago, now it does 7. Early on you will start to unlock magic moves like the ability to throw a fireball. This move does more damage than the simple sword swing we have been doing up until now, but consumes MP. Your magic points, and just like ammunition in a game with guns, you will need to keep an eye on how much you have left and try not to run out. While we have been talking about our main hero, it's not long until you have a new ally who fights right beside you and adds some wonderful variety to the combat experience. Normally an ally will have different weapons and abilities, so you can get a a taste of them and see how it complements your main character to work together as a team. A modern addition, or maybe it's always been around in Dragon Quest games, feel free to let me know in the comment section below, is you can choose how other party members are controlled. If you want to control everybody, you certainly can, but if you would rather the computer takes over and you control only your main character during combat, that is a selectable option, resulting in faster combat as well. You can choose how their playstyle is. The variety of companions is what you would expect in welcoming. Have your brute, swift, your mage, your fist fighter and so on and they are colourful lot that you will grow attached to and learn to love. Managing the stats of all of these companions is not hard to do either as the game is rather forgiving where it needs to be. If you are happy to grind, in other words fight extra monsters to level up your characters to beat the tougher opponents, then that is a perfectly valid option. 
If on the other hand, you want to dive a bit deeper, diving into unlocking skills and getting the best weapons and best armor available, that is supported as well. Let's talk about these extra options that make fighting in Dragon Quest XI so fun and you will be spending most of your time doing this. Don't worry, lots of exploring and other fun things to do as well, which we will discuss later on. So let's talk weapons and things you can equip to each one of your party members. I mentioned we start with the sword, but of course, there are many different types of swords. Some do damage, while others have a special effect attached. You also have spears, boomerangs, axes, knives, wands, and even claws. Not every character can equip every type of weapon, which is good, as it stops everyone looking and fighting the same. As you level up, you get skill points, and you can choose what skills to unlock. This lets you get out much more damage and use special effects like maybe putting an enemy to sleep or freezing them. Maybe steal some magic or suck some health for yourself like a vampire. The system is thankfully pretty easy to understand and not confusing for the sake of being original as many RPGs are normally guilty of. Not everything is about attacking though. We can equip shields to increase our chances of parrying an incoming attack automatically and we can find or buy armor increasing our overall health. Body armor armor, headgear, weapons and extras can be attached to boost your fighter stats. Battles are pretty forgiving as well and you will not find yourself dying all the time. This does not mean that there is no challenge to be had, but the designers are rather smart about it. And bosses act as a skill test to ensure you have understood the mechanics that have been presented to you thus far and encourage you to look over all your gear that you have collected and make sure that at the very least you have bothered to attach the most powerful weapon to your character instead of the little knife you picked up three hours ago and has been serving you well and you haven't been put back since. Let's talk exploration. The world of Dragon Quest XI is beautiful. This Unreal Engine 4 game does not aim for realism in any kind of way, opting for vibrant colors and clean rendering to encourage the player to explore the vast, vast world. There is a lot to see and do here. Builds are large and littered with monsters, but also secrets. Treasure chests are often hidden out of sight and you will be rewarded a plenty of times for making sure you have checked around every nook and cranny. For those who want to go the extra mile, Dragon Quest XI allows you to also build brand new items, weapons and armor. Find hidden instructions around the world teaching you how to craft certain items. A fun little mini game that starts off very simple will let you make plenty of items not available in shops and for cheaper if you have the right ingredients. This encourages you to really look around your environment as if you don't find that new weapon you need, chances are later you can just make it yourself. I've always appreciated games that let you make use of everything you find and that way it never truly feels like you are wasting your time exploring. A previous video I did making the bold claim that Zelda Breath of the Wild is a better open world design than Skyrim goes into great detail of the benefits of connecting each game element to each other, resulting in players feeling like all of their actions are coming together and it's a very, it's very satisfying when done right. A design choice which I found very welcoming is that the enemy can be seen out in the wild. This lets you avoid encounters by simply running past them. Now, I will admit, I did not like this when I first started playing. I'm used to random encounters and thought this change might make things too easy. Thankfully, it turned out to be a smart move. If I got lost going in the wrong direction multiple times, which I did, I was not punished by having to fight an extra 50 encounters I didn't want to. Having the ability to see the enemy meant I could firstly purposely pick fights with new enemy types I found. It let me make more calculated decisions, hunting down specifically tougher opponents who I knew would need more XP when defeated, instead of relying on a random encounter and hoping the game paired me up with enemies worth fighting. It also meant that I was not running around on empty fields and suddenly I'm fighting monsters that were not there a moment ago. It made the open world design feel more populated as I could see all these different types and colorful enemies running about the place. I also want to say I really appreciated how this game handles its more religious themes as well. You save your game progress at churches or angel statues and it stays respectful. It never leans into the horrible trope of it secretly being an evil cult or something like The Last of Us 2 and many others do. 
do. As a religious man who loves God, it meant a lot to me to not be insulted for once. Now, I won't spoil anything in regards to story, but I'll say that it is not going to be anything that blows your mind or be something you compare to the original Final Fantasy VII game. It's good enough. It's clean, good versus evil, and I don't see anything wrong with that. There are twists, and I'm not saying it's boring. It's just not going to be the reason why you remember this game so fondly. It will be the perfect balance of combat versus exploration. It will be the perfect balance that things are simple enough to zone out to, but deep enough if you really want to go that extra mile. The voice acting is pretty good all around as well. So overall, as a RPG that's very traditional, that's very turn-based, that's visually gorgeous, and that is a game which very soon I would have clocked 100 hours, and I'm happily going through my second run through the game, that's why this review exists today. Because regardless of the fact that this game came out in 2017, this is still the best modern RPG I have ever come across to date. It feels traditional in a lot of the areas where it should, but it feels new and modern enough where it doesn't feel like I'm sacrificing any of the you know, modern day benefits. I think this game is an absolute no-brainer and an immediate recommendation to anyone who enjoys these types of games. If you are waiting for, you know, Squaresoft, Square Enix, whatever they're called these days, to start making their Final Fantasy games, have the proper turn-based combat and you're getting tired of waiting and you were upset that the Final Fantasy 7 remake got rid of the amazing turn-based combat it had in favor of action-oriented gameplay. Say that upset you as it upset me and you're, and you're waiting. You're like, where is my modern take? Good news, it already came out in 2017. It runs like a dream. Go and get it. You will not regret this game. It is a lot of fun and it is exactly what you hoped it would be. With that being said, God bless you all. Take care. I release multiple videos every single week, sometimes two if you're lucky, covering many different topics. I follow my passion. I don't follow trends. So if you appreciate that, and again, you appreciate an old-fashioned YouTuber who believes that video games is about escapism and not activism, you want to go against that, then empower voices like myself who are stubborn as it comes because games should be games. That's what I grew up with. That's what helped me get through my childhood. Video games means a lot to me me and I want the gaming industry to get back to what's important which is simple as it sounds I just want games to be all about games again and this game at the very least is all about that it feels gaming from start to finish in the best possible way all right see you all next time bye bye